In this video, I'm going to help you understand the different video and audio file formats so that you can pick the best one for your project. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus filmmaking tip. Alright, so you've found yourself staring blankly at the list of file formats available to you when exporting your video in Premiere. Well, today is your lucky day. Understanding the differences between file types and when to use each one is super important. And here's why. Obviously, you want your video to look and sound the best it can. Some file formats may offer better quality than others, but the downside is they're larger files. And the reason that they're larger is that high quality video contains a lot of data, as opposed to compressed video which has less data and can look blurry in comparison. So you want to determine when you can get away with those larger files, and when you have to sacrifice a little quality to be able to upload, transfer, or use the file how you would like. So let's start with audio. Audio files generally fall into one of three categories, lossy, lossless, and uncompressed. Lossy files are smaller and they degrade or permanently lose some data when they're compressed. An example of a lossy audio file format is an MP3. MP3s may sound okay in your headphones, but professional audio engineers and filmmakers generally don't like to work with lossy formats because they lose quality that is irretrievable when they're compressed. Lossless formats, on the other hand, have some compression, but they have the ability to decompress back to their original size. In other words, they don't lose anything in the process, hence the term lossless. An example of a lossless audio file format would be a FLAC or a LAC, which to be honest, I don't use that often. And lastly, you have uncompressed audio files. Uncompressed audio files are the highest quality. They retain all of their information. An example of an uncompressed audio file format is a WAV or an AIFF. So with this in mind, when you're choosing music files for your video or when you're picking a setting on your Zoom recorder, try to choose a WAV or an AIFF file when you can. I prefer WAVs because these file types are uncompressed and audio files are generally pretty small to begin with. So as a filmmaker, it's not really worth it to try and save tiny amounts of space on your drive by shaving data off of your audio files. All right, so now let's talk video. As of the making of this video, perhaps the two most popular video file formats are MP4s or H.264s and MOVs or QuickTime Movies. H.264s are relatively small files and they generally look pretty good. Many cameras record to H.264 when they're recording video and most content creators use the H.264 file format for their YouTube videos. But contrary to what you might think, H.264s are not the highest quality. They work great for YouTube because they're relatively small files which make for quick uploads and the image looks pretty good. But if you want better quality, say to archive a final version of a video, you might choose an MOV or QuickTime movie format. QuickTime movies are higher quality and as a result, the files are much larger. So for example, here's a one minute film exported as an H.264 and here's the same one minute film exported as a QuickTime. Now multiply that QuickTime file size by however long your film is and you start to realize just how big QuickTimes can get. So as mentioned, you would generally only choose a QuickTime if you're creating an archival version of your film. What's an archival version? Well, an archival version is basically a high quality backup version. You could bring this backup into another edit if you needed to. Say, if you didn't want to save all of your project media and you just wanted to make one high quality render of the final film. So, for example, filmmakers looking to archive their films will often render a QuickTime file with an Apple ProRes 422 codec, which is a fairly good quality file format and codec combo. Which begs the question, what's a codec? Well, in layman's terms, a codec is kind of like digital packaging for your audio and video that allows different devices to read it. 
So, for example, the Apple ProRes 422 codec, while it is a lossy compression type, is a pretty decent option for archiving. Not only does it support up to 5K, but it's been used as a final format delivery for HD broadcast in commercials, feature films, and Blu-ray streaming for quite a while now. So it's a reasonably good codec for the average filmmaker looking to make a good quality backup of their final film. Too big to upload to YouTube, but adequate for archiving. All right, so let's do a quick review. Sending it to YouTube, make an H.264. Need a high quality archival version? Consider a quick time with perhaps an Apple ProRes 422 codec. Those are the very basics. We could spend a lot of time diving into each format and codec a bit more, but maybe that's for another video. All right, let's do that tip. So now you know the basics of file formats and codecs, but you may be wondering what is the perfect combo for my project? Well, luckily Premiere has done most of the work for you already. When you go to export your final video in Premiere, you can always choose the Adobe preset that best describes where your video is gonna end up. Once you choose export, simply select your file format up here. This is gonna be on YouTube, so I'll choose H.264 for my format. Then jump to the preset menu below and scroll down to the one that best describes your destination. I'll pick YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD because I'm uploading to YouTube and those are the dimensions of my sequence. But say I had shot in 1080p. Well, there's a preset for that too. So take the guesswork out of your exports and let Premiere suggest the best settings for you. If only they could pick your dates as well. Sigh. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted. And I will catch you next time.